Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I'm super excited to be sitting down and filming this video for you guys today because it is that time of the year again for the Sephora VIB sale. I don't think that that's what they call it anymore. The Sephora sale. This is one of my favorite sales of the year and I love coming on and giving you guys my recommendations. I did not get a chance to do that back in the spring when the sale was going on. Uh, I was having my baby, <laughs> but this time I am coming at you with some recommendations that I have been really, really loving lately. I also have a couple products that are a little more on the quote unquote viral side and I just kind of wanted to update you guys and not recommend them for you. And then at the end of the video, I also have some wish list items, some items that I have my eye on that I would love your guys' feedback about them if you have gotten a chance to try them or not. If I should try them, if you guys want to see me try them on my channel, all of the above. We are filming late at night. It's like 7, almost 7.30 at this point. I have a glass of wine with me. It has been a long day because the longest nap that Ivy took today was like 30 minutes and she's almost seven months old. So that's not good. A <laughs> seven month old baby should be taking longer than 30 minute naps. Also, tried to go to a pumpkin patch and it got rained out. So I was really, really sad about that. We haven't been able to do any sort of folly things with her yet, just with the weather or we were traveling for a while and then we all three got sick. Um, so I was really bummed that it got rained out, but that is okay. We are sitting here. We've got all our products in front of me. I got my glass of wine and I am excited to tell you my recommendations. Before we get into that though, a little bit of information about the sale. For Rouge, it starts on 1027 and runs until 116. And then VIB and Insider, they are starting it on the same day for you guys on 1031. And that will also go until 116. The code this time is time to save. And just like they've been doing the past couple sales, um, all of their Sephora collection items are also 30% off. But you know what? If you like read the little fine print in this picture here, it says that that has a different code. So I'm wondering if like you have, like you can't use two codes at once. So I'm wondering like if you wanna buy Sephora items at 30% off, you have to use that code, but then you can't combine it with a sale code. And I don't think they've ever done that before. Usually the Sephora items are just automatically 30% off. So I think that's a little shady. I don't like that. Um, quote me if I'm wrong, like not quote me, correct me if I'm wrong. If they've done that in the past, I don't remember them doing that. And I just got an icky feeling about that. Why aren't they just automatically 30% off? You know what I mean? But like I said, I could be totally wrong. I don't, I don't really know. And I didn't, well, I participated in the sale last time because I know I did a um, haul video. I just didn't do a recommendations video. I'm also going to have all my other recommendations videos linked down below for you to check out in case you want more recommendations from me. How many times am I going to say the word recommendations? Probably a lot this video. Um, but I completely stand by all of those products that I already recommended <laughs> previously in previous years. So I will have those videos linked down below as well if you want to check them out. Wearing a sweater was not a good option. I am sweating. Okay, the first one. This is going to come as no surprise. I'm not going to talk long about it because I love it so much. You guys know a couple of these recommendations I have beat to death on this channel. Like you guys are like, Emily, we get it. You love that product. So just bear with me why I bring them up another time for me, please, because they really just are so good. The Nars Cream Bronzer, the best holy grail cream bronzer I've ever used in my life. I use the shade Laguna 01. It is absolutely perfection. If you can see, I have a massive pan in it. I'm going to use this whole thing up. And when I do, I will 100% rebuy it. It is the cream bronzer I use absolutely every single day. Blends in like a dream, takes two seconds, lasts all day long, doesn't fade, sets really nicely with a powder, never looks like cakey, muddy, anything, like patchy, nothing. It is the most perfect cream bronzer I have ever used. I love it with my whole entire heart. I had to bring it up again in this video. Um, and recommend it again because I just I can't shut up about it it's the best okay the next product has really snuck up on me and has quickly become a holy grail of mine that I use pretty much every single time I do my makeup and I'm really really hoping that it is in stock by the time the sale starts because this shade currently is out of stock and I'm really hoping it comes back in stock but it is the Amico Lay this is her Skin Melt Loose Powder. I have the shade Translucent. That is the one that works best with my skin tone, but they do have two other shades if you are a deeper skin tone than me. This powder is the most beautiful powder. I don't, I don't wanna say it's my favorite powder ever because I still really, really love the Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder. That is like such a good powder. And then the Hourglass, uh, not Mineral Veil. Is it, it's not Mineral Veil. The Hourglass Veil Loose Setting Powder. Um, I also really, really love that powder too. But this one, like I said, I cannot put down. It is so incredibly smoothing. It mattifies your face, but not matte. That doesn't make any sense. What I mean is that like it sets your face down and like sets your makeup in place and helps it last a really long time. 
but it doesn't suck the life out of your face. It doesn't make your face super, super matte. It doesn't make it look dry or cakey or anything like that. It doesn't emphasize dry patches. This is such a beautiful powder and it's such like, it's just a really nice finely milled powder. And like I said, it just goes on your face really nicely, smoothly. I, I, everything about this powder is just beautiful. I cannot stop wearing it. I have it on my face today. Don't judge, don't judge this makeup too hard, okay guys? I've had this on for what I say, it's like 7.30 right now. I put this on at like noon. So I've had it on for almost eight hours. So it's um it's a little expired, it's a little old. I had to walk through a pumpkin patch in the rain. My daughter likes to grab my face and also I'm still a little bit sick so my nose has been running. So like I said, don't judge this makeup. But this is just beautiful, it's just beautiful. I cannot put it down and so many people that I watch here on YouTube love this powder as well and if you are in the need for a new powder i would recommend it um i do want to say before we get too far into it you don't need any of these products okay so don't take these recommendations as me saying like you need this powder you need this cream bronzer you need you don't need any of this okay you don't need any of this it is hard out there inflation is real things are expensive makeup is a luxury item that well not a luxury but you know what i mean an item that um you don't need you don't need any of this so don't take me recommend rec recommending these to you as pressure to buy them or saying that you absolutely need this in your life or you will not go on because that's absolutely not true i don't like when people pressure people into like buying things saying you need it you need it you have to buy it um because you don't you know what i mean these are just products that if you are wanting to buy a new powder or bronzer or you know anything else coming up um you want to splurge you want to treat yourself maybe it's your birthday you have a gift card anything like that these are products that i've been liking um recently i'm gonna tell you why i like them and then you can then decide for yourself if you want to spend the money on it but yeah don't don't take this as like you need to buy all these you know what i mean Okay, I just wanted to get that out of my system because I didn't want to come across as like that because you don't need any of it. Okay, I'm rambling. Let's move on. <laughs> the foundation I have on today that I've been loving, I bought it in the last Sephora sale and I've been using it pretty regularly since then. It's the NARS Self-Reflecting Foundation. And in this, I have the shade Light One Oslo. Again, it's the foundation I have on my skin. It is a really beautiful medium foundation. I feel like it does have a pretty skin-like finish. It It's not the most like long-lasting foundation by any means. And it does have a tendency to sink into my smile lines a little bit, so I don't love that. However, if you like just a really nice medium coverage foundation that is skin-like, isn't too glowy or not matte at all, not drying, doesn't emphasize dryness when you do have some, because my skin is pretty dry right now, especially my nose from <laughs> blowing it an unfathomable amount of time the last like week being sick. Um, this is a really good one. I've been really, really enjoying this. Another favorite that I've talked about quite a few times on my channel, so I'm not gonna harp on it, the Cali Ray Surf Proof Setting Spray. I swear, this is the best hydrating setting spray, but it helps my makeup last a long time. I have it on today and I'm going on seven, eight hours of wear. Yes, my skin is looking a little like glowy and dewy. So this is definitely going to be a hydrating setting spray. So if you are not into that, you like more matte skin, you have oily skin, this probably wouldn't be for you. But if you are on the more normal to dry side and you want a nice hydrating setting spray that gives you a glow but not in an oily greasy way keep in mind i have a lot of lights on me right now my face is not usually or in everyday life look this oily in real life um so keep that in mind but this really will give you a little bit of a glow and i, I swear it helps my makeup last a really long time so if you're into that kind of setting spray i would give this a go it's 35 dollars, and i thought at first that that was ridiculous because the charlotte tilbury one is 34 I think and I was like um wh why would I rebuy this at $35 when this is like 34 or something don't quote me I don't know what this is but it's around there they're around the same price I was like well that's silly I'm just gonna use this up and then not rebuy it because why would I like why but the fluid ounces this is 3.38 fluid ounces and this is only 3.3 fluid ounces. So packaging can be deceiving. You actually get more in this. So um, I don't know why I wanted to bring that up just because I thought that this was so little and you get so, I thought you get so little amount for the price, uh, but you really don't. I feel like it's a pretty good deal. And like I said, it's just a beautiful setting spray. This is also a recommendation. I'm, I'm loving this as well. I still love this. This has been my holy grail for years at this point, but this is like, it's crew up there. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Okay, this next product might be a little bit weird of a recommendation because I don't think that I have really talked about it. It's on my channel, shown it a lot of love on my channel, but this past summer, I used this concealer 
constantly and I thought it was really really beautiful on my skin and I'm thinking about picking up a lighter shade because this one is too dark for me now that summer is sadly coming to an end and I will not be out in the sun at all and the little tiny bit of a uh, tan that I do have is going to fade very quickly um, but it is the one size turn up the base the butter silk concealer I do have the shade fair three like I said, I do think I want to get a lighter shade. I think uh, Fair 2 would be the one that would match me. I'm hoping that my local Sephora has this in stock and I can uh, swatch it. But anyways, this is just a really beautiful concealer. It has a full coverage without being thick and cakey and drying. I like it on my under eyes as well as my face, like to spot concealer on the face. And it's just a really beautiful concealer. Like I don't even know what else to say other like, how do I explain this? <laughs> I feel like it's like the end of the day, I'm tired. I'm trying to come up with words that explain makeup eloquently to get my point across of why I love these products to you uh, without repeating myself or sound like a fool. But this is just a really thin formula, like I said, but it provides a really nice amount of coverage and dries down nicely. It doesn't crease too, too badly on my under eyes. Everything creases on my under eyes, but this doesn't crease too badly. And it just looks good on the skin. It melts into the skin. It's skin-like, not drying or cakey, like I said. Um, and I don't really think that this concealer gets a lot of hype or a lot of recognition from myself included and uh, other people on YouTube. Uh, and it is a good one. It's a good one. And I'm actually going to not recommend a really hyped up concealer here in a minute that a lot of people are loving that I am not. Um, then I would recommend this one over that one any day and it's cheaper. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I only have one skincare sort of item for you. In the past, I've done skincare recommendations, but lately I've been keeping it really, really simple with my skincare routine. And I also have some products from my dermatologist that I've been using consistently the past almost year or so at this point. Um, so between the simple routine and those products, I haven't been trying a ton of new items other than really moisturizers. And I don't really have any to like super recommend to you. So the only skincare sort of item I have is the Summer Fridays Shade Drops Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Mineral Milk Sunscreen. Oh my gosh, that is a mouthful. These are beautiful. They are a really beautiful formulation. They're nice and thin on the skin, so they sink right in and they do provide a little bit of a glow, but it's not too oily or greasy. It doesn't pill up on me personally. I've never had the sunscreen pill up on me and it looks really, really beautiful on its own. Like when I don't wear makeup throughout the day, which is seven out of seven days recently, <laughs> like six out of seven days recently. I like never wear makeup anymore, sadly. Um, and this looks really pretty and hydrating on its own, but it also works really nicely on your makeup as well. My only qualm is that it's SPF 30. I wish it was more than that. I really do. I I love a 50, I'll do 40, I'll do 30 if I like really love the formula. And like I said, this is a really good one. It's just thin and sinks into your skin. And it's a good one for under makeup, especially if you need some extra hydration coming up in the winter time if your skin gets dry. Okay, my last recommendation. Am I cheating a little bit with this one? Maybe, because I only have a mini size of it and it's fairly new to me, but I have really, really been liking this mascara. So I did want to mention it to you and it's the Huda Beauty One Coat Wow Mascara. It's a mascara that I have on my eyes today. Like I said, this makeup, I've, well, you know how old this makeup is. I've, I've mentioned it like five times, but this makeup is like eight hours old at this point. And this baby is still holding a curl. My eyelashes still look long and thick and they haven't fallen at all. There is the tiniest, tiniest bit of little tiny flecks that have fallen out on my face. I'm okay with that because I can just like wipe that away. But if you do struggle with flaking, maybe keep that in mind before you possibly purchase this mascara. It has the type of wand that I like, the really spiky sort of wand. It doesn't have like the fluffy wand. I prefer this type of wand though. And it just is what it says one coat for sure this is one coat and honestly if you did more than one coat i don't think you would like it i think it would get really thick and clumpy so i am a one coater with this like it says and i just think it makes my eyelashes look long and thick and holds a curl and doesn't get clumpy if you're careful and i've just really been enjoying this so when this little baby size is out i got this with sephora points um i i plan on buying a full size maybe during the sale i haven't decided if i'm going to or not because I have a lot of mascaras, you guys, like too many mascaras to get through. So I don't need another full size mascara, but I'm really liking that. I don't think it's for everyone. I think if you don't like thick, bold lashes or lashes that clump, or you are someone who likes to just coat on the mascara and put on two, three layers, this would not be for you. But if you like how my lashes look, 
I think you might enjoy that one as well. I did want to mention this because it's a newer product to me and it's a newer product to the market and I thought quite a few of you might have your eye on it for this sale and you might want my opinion on it. The Natasha Denona I Need a New Palette. I am not putting this in my recommendations for a couple of reasons. Um, well, the main one is that I just don't know if I've really used it enough times to fully gather my thoughts on it. I've probably used it five or six times, but they've been pretty sporadic. I would love to do a one week, one palette on this. I don't know if I will be able to do that for you guys just because life and taking care of an almost seven month old every day is a lot. And um, I just don't have a lot of time to film and edit, as you guys can probably tell by my uh, twice a month uploads. But I would love to do a one week one palette on it and really, really fully get my thoughts on it. So maybe I'll try to make that happen for you guys. I don't hate this palette, but I definitely don't love it. It is the palette I use today, but I feel like the mattes are like coming off a little bit in the corner. If you can see here, there's a little bit of balding um, and I just don't love that. So it's not like the best, best quality I've ever used. Um, but if you like this color story and you don't really have problems with like balding mattes coming off or fluffing off throughout the day, um, it is a really pretty color story. The shimmers are pretty as well, but I just didn't feel good enough putting this in my recommendations but it's not a terrible palette so if you did have your eye on it and you do get like 10 15 20 percent off maybe that's like up to your discretion maybe go in person and swatch it um but yeah i just wanted to mention that all right these next couple are products i don't recommend uh because they are products that i feel like are getting some hype or they're just pretty expensive and i've bought them in the past and i wanted to give you a little bit of an update on them uh the first one being the natasha denona High Glam Concealer, Brightening and Hydrating Crease Proof Serum Concealer. I don't really agree with any of those claims at all. This is getting a ton of buzz, a ton of hype. A lot of the YouTubers I watch love this concealer, and I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I even used it again the other day. Double check myself to make sure before mentioning it in this video, and I still don't like it. I don't think it has full coverage like a lot of people are claiming. And I, and I, I want to be fully transparent that I was using too much in the beginning and then I kept seeing people talk about it and saying that you need the smallest little amount. So from then I was just putting one little dot under each eye and when I do that, it doesn't provide me enough coverage. Like I can still see my blueness peeking through and also it's very, very drying, very drying and it creases so terribly on me. It says it's a crease proof concealer and on me and my under eyes, it does not not crease. It does not crease proof. <laughs> what am I trying to say? It creases. Um, like I said, every concealer creases. I used the Anastasia Beverly Hills one tonight or earlier today and it's creasing as well, but I just feel like this one creases the worst and it's just very, very drying on my under eyes and it just doesn't look good. The shade is a little too light for me. So that was my bad when buying it and that could have something to do with it. So keep that in mind, but I just feel like I see a lot of people raving about this and saying it's a really amazing concealer and I don't get the hype. Another one, this product specifically isn't really getting hype anymore, but it kind of is because they came out with a concealer version of it. So it's a House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. They recently came out with their Skin Tech Foundation Triclone Concealer. And because of that, I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers I watch trying out that concealer and either using this with this or mentioning it that oh, well, I love the Triclone foundation so much, I have high hopes for this concealer. So same kind of thing with the Natasha Denona concealer that I retried this recently because after hearing so many people lately rave about this, again, you know, kind of bring it back up because the concealer has it in the forefront of their mind, I was like, well, what am I missing? Like, I don't remember liking the foundation. Let me try it again to make sure um, because I could, I mean, clearly I'm missing something, right? Everyone loves it but me. I still hate this foundation and I know hate is a strong word, so maybe I don't hate it, but it is a very finicky foundation and it just does not look good on my skin personally. It is very odd because it kind of sits on top of the skin and yet still somehow sinks into every pore that I have on my face, especially right here on my cheeks. And I'm like, how can you sit on top of my skin and then also sink into all my pores? That doesn't make any sense to me. It does not provide very good coverage at all. It is definitely a low medium coverage in my opinion. And I've changed my tune guys. I'm a medium coverage kind of gal now. I used to only like full coverage foundations and I, I can dabble in with the, I can, I can hang with the medium foundation now. And this is just low medium in my opinion. It doesn't really cover up anything on my skin. And it also looks terrible, very, very drying, emphasizes every dry patch on my face um, and doesn't wear well. So it's got a lot of uh, negatives for me personally, um, which is a bummer because everyone, 
everyone loves this. I, I literally don't know one other person that I have personally seen on YouTube dislike this foundation. So, um, just, I just wanted to give another point of view and my opinion on it in case you were thinking about buying it. Maybe get a sample from Sephora or try to swatch it in person or I, I don't know. Just keep that in mind if you have your eye on this because so many people rave about it and I don't want you to get sucked into the, into the hype like I did because I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Okay, now onto my wish list items. This video is going to be long. I'm so sorry, but let me scoot over a little bit so I can pop up pictures. Please let me know down below in the comments if you have tried any of these and what your thoughts are of them so I can better make decisions on spending my own money on them. Also, if you are dying for me to try any of these, let me know that too so I can keep that in my mind if I want to buy it or not. The first one being the Amicole Gloss. This is in the shade Bliss that I would want. A couple of reasons why. One, I just love the powder so much like I mentioned earlier in the video. Also, I think it's Jessica Braun. I don't know if it's Jessica Braun and Taylor Wynn, but definitely Jessica Braun loves this gloss and she says it's super, super smoothing and she has very lined lips and I've seen her use it in her videos. It just smooths right over her lips and makes them look very, very smooth. And I feel like I don't have as lined of lips as Jessica, but I still have quite a decent amount of lines in my lips. Um, and I would just like a really smoothing gloss. Plus I'm very into gloss these days. Like that is my jam, my last video I put up of my like everyday makeup routine. I've been doing that for the most part when I do apply makeup and that lends very well to just a nice pretty gloss with that makeup look. So I'm in the market for another type of gloss. Um, so I, I would really like to try that one. Okay, the next one, I don't need it. You guys, I don't need it, but I really want it. <laughs> it's the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 3 Matte Palette. I love Patrick Ta's matte formulation. It is one of my favorites. I have his other two palettes, the first one and then the second one, the rose one. Absolutely love those palettes. I use them quite a lot, but I am not as into super sparkly, shimmery eyeshadow as I used to be. I'm definitely more into matte looks or just simple more looks. You can't really tell by today, but that's really what I've been gearing more towards lately. Um, and like I said, I just really love his matte formulation. I think it looks really nice on me. It's one of the few mattes that barely patches on me, if at all. And that's really hard to come by for me. If you watch any of my Get Ready With Me's, you know that almost every matte formulation patches on me. I think it's the skin on my eyes. I don't think it's the formulas or the eyeshadows. I truly think it's the skin on my eyes, but they patch the least out of a lot of other matte formulations that I've tried. And I just think that this looks beautiful. All of those different matte shades from light to dark, cool and warm, and just any matte shade you would ever need all in one palette. Someone did mention to me that it looked a lot like the Makeup by Mario matte palette, which I do own, guys. I do own that one. Yeah. Like, I don't need this Patrick Tall one. I don't. But um, I don't love the Makeup by Mario matte formulation. It's good. I like it. But I definitely like the Patrick Tall more. And I feel like I would just end up selling probably the Makeup by Mario one because I haven't used it a ton and it's sal sal salvageable. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's expensive. So, I don't know. Uh, the next one is the Olaplex Strong Days Ahead Kit. I've never tried anything from Olaplex, I don't think. But you guys, my hair, I always talk, I always talk and brag, not brag, but I always talk about how my hair is thick and healthy, which I feel like for the most part it is, but man, I am getting some breakage bad. I wear my hair up every day, like literally almost every single solitary day. I maybe wear my hair down one day a month. I know that's terrible for my hair. I do wear it down at night though. I will say that. Like I don't sleep in it up, so that's good. But during the day, I just always have it up. So because of that, like right here, I don't know if I'll, I, I have them like bobby pinned back, but like I'm just getting hair that breaks right there. And so it just like is like this long from being in a ponytail or a bun all the time. So then I'm just getting breakage. Does that make sense? I think I'm explaining that correctly. Um, so my hair is not as healthy as I used to brag about it being, and it's bumming me out and it doesn't look good when I have it up, when I have just hairs just like, kind of like, I, I don't know, just like broken off and it just looks bad. Um, so I want to try this. I've heard good things about Olaplex, but I've also heard that it makes people's hair fall out. Question mark. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but I still would like to try it because I've heard the majority of people do like Olaplex and their products and I don't know maybe this would help the breakage in my hair and make it stop breaking I know what would make it would stop breaking is wear it down I can't be bothered to do that though so um I'm gonna try this maybe but I think I am let me know if you've tried Olaplex and what your 
experiences with it if it helped your hair or if it made your hair fall out in clumps because I've heard that too and I don't want that to happen. <laughs> okay, the Tower 28 Serum Concealer. I have my eye on it. I swatched it in store a couple months ago at this point and it swatched really nicely. It looks beautiful. I've heard good reviews about it. It's a serum concealer so I assume it would be a little bit more hydrating on my under eyes and my under eyes are getting dry. My whole face, my whole body is getting dry these days. So I would like to try this out. I don't need a new concealer at all, but um, I got my eye on this one. Okay, the Natasha Denona My Dream Lip Liner and Lip Gloss. The Natasha Denona My Dream Lipstick in the shade, I think it's just Natasha, but it's her, yeah, Natasha, her My Dream Lipstick. It's what I have on today. I love this lipstick. Like, if you can tell, it is, like, busted. Like, it is, like, falling apart. Um, it's almost gone at this point. It's what I have on today. I think I just said that. Um, and I just really, really love this lipstick a lot. I think it's beautiful. And I cannot tell you how many times I have seen people wear that combination, specifically Martina Lilly and Rachel Palmieri. There has been so many videos of them that I have loved their lip looks and scrolled down in their description boxes and seen that it is this combination of the My Dream lip liner, the lipstick, and then the lip gloss on top. And I already have the lipstick, so I'm like, I think I need the lip liner and the lip gloss to make the trifecta. You know what I mean? I wish she sold it in a trio. I don't know why she doesn't. I would snatch that baby up so fast, especially because I could use a new lipstick. Uh, maybe this, maybe she does on her website. I'll have to look. If she has on her website, maybe I'll buy that. But either way, I love this lipstick in the shade. So I just love this shade. I think it's beautiful. So I would like to have the matching liner and gloss. You know what I mean? This is the third lip gloss on this wish list, So I probably will not end up getting this one, but I've just never tried this product before. And a lot of people seem to like it. The Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Gloss in the shade Juicy Watermelon. That like juicy bright pink shade looks absolutely stunning. Probably more for spring and summer and we're going into fall and winter. So maybe I should save this for the spring sale. But either way, I got my eye on it. I think it looks beautiful. I've heard a lot of people say that this lip gloss formula is very smoothing and lovely on the lips. Um, I've just never tried it. It's kind of like a FOMO thing. Like so many people have tried it, but I never have. So it's like, is it as good as everyone says? You know what I mean? So probably won't pick that one up because it's the third lip gloss and I'd rather have the other two, the Natasha Denona and the Ami Cole. Um, but it's it's on my mind. It's on my mind. All right, the last two items I have on my wish list are both from Bare Minerals. The first one being the Blonzer in the shade Kiss of Mauve. I have the other, well, I guess there's five shades now, but I have three of the um, Blonzer shades, the Kiss of Copper, Kiss of Pink, and Kiss of Rose. The Kiss of Pink is one of my favorite blushes in the whole entire world. I absolutely love that blush so stinking much. And I love the formulation of both of them, or I'm sorry, all three of them. There's three of them, Emily. I love the formula of all three of them. So I kind of just want the shape. It's the Kiss of Mauve, like I said, and it just looks really beautiful. I absolutely 1 million percent do not need another blush. Like I, I do not need another blush at all. In fact, I need to like declutter my blushes and not buy any more but I just love this formula so much and that shade looks so pretty. So again, I'm hoping my uh, Sephora has it in person so I can look at it in person and swatch it and see if it's like unique to my collection. Probably not. I don't think any blush shade at this point would be unique to my collection, um, but I want it. And then also the Bare Minerals Highlighting Blush in the shade Pink Glow. I just think this looks pretty. I would never use this as a blush. I would use it probably as a blush topper into the highlight section, kind of bridging my blush and my highlight together, like this area kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, but I've just heard really good things about it and it just looks pretty. And I really like Pear Minerals. I like them a lot. I want to try more from the brand. So I have my eye on that as well. Also, I didn't write this down, but as I'm thinking about it, I'm looking at myself in the my phone filming. Um, the hour, the dang hourglass face palettes you guys every year every year they come out with these and every year it catches my eye and every year I want to buy them but they are just so dang expensive that I usually don't buy them today I use this one that was their holiday launch a couple years ago at this point the ambient lighting edit mini sculpture to unlock palette there are all these makeup items like so many words <laughs> but I use this today all four of the shades the bronzer to um, go over my NARS cream bronzer this blush and then this I mixed together these two for the highlight section because I just wanted a little bit more natural of a highlight and it just looks really, really pretty on the skin. And Hourglass is like just really pretty powders. But I also don't use this one very much. So I'm like, what? I don't, I don't need the other one. You know what I mean? If I did get one, I'd probably get the Jellyfish one. It's for light skin tones and it's 
a lot of really beautiful shades, but it's also $90. Why? Why is $90? I know there's six shades and I know that it's hourglass and it's bougie and expensive and I, I get that, but that's just a lot of money. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I decide to say whatever and uh, buy it. I don't know. That was you guys. That was my Sephora sale recommendations, don't recommendations, and wish list <laughs> items. Please let me know down below if you've tried any of these, if you agree with me or if you want to see me try them. You know, all the things I said earlier in the video. This has already probably been a pretty long video. Emily, stop rambling. Go hang out with your husband. Ivy is in bed. She is snoozing away. Um, and we are probably going to go watch some TV. We are currently watching Yellowstone. So good. Um, also Suits and Heartland. If you know what Heartland is, comment down below, please, because we started watching that show as a joke because we were like, what is this? That looks silly. Like that looks like fruit, fruit family, like, you know, kind of lame. Um, and we're on season nine. So jokes on us because we love that show. Um, and if you know what it is, let me know down below, please. If you love it too. Anyways, that's it. I'm done. That was all my recommendations and all that. Like I said, comment down below if you want to see me try any of these or if you recommend them as well, or if you, if I didn't mention anything in this video that you would think I would love or you would like to see me try, let me know, please. As you saw by my extensive wish list, I do plan on shopping the sale. So look out for a haul video coming up whenever I get those items in and all that. Um, and a, probably a haul try on. I don't know if I'll do a separate haul or a haul try on. I probably should just do a haul try on thinking about how I don't have a ton of time to film and all of that. So look out for those videos coming up and all of the goodies that I do end up purchasing. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're awesome. I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet and hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys.